So we're going to go ahead and get started here. Today we're going to talk a little bit about DPOJ, uh, which is kind of the next big thing that's uh, coming due in SDLP. And that's going to be in late February. So we're going to talk about all the different categories of DPOJ. Uh, and if you've submitted your SDLP project, I heard Molly was just talking about that. Uh, those The judges have until 7 o'clock tonight to score those. Uh, if, you, if you were a judge, you know, it was a great experience for you. Uh, you've probably seen four projects. You're like, okay, th- now you might have a, if you're a first year SDLP coordinator, you're probably like, I have a better idea of what SDLP is uh, or what it could be. Um, I had four projects that I scored um, in my uh, little judge team. And so just to kind of give you an, an idea of that, uh, I had two projects that I scored to move on and I had two projects I scored that did not move on, uh, in my opinion. Now, uh, whoever else is on my judge team could probably overrule me or whatever, but and I was kind of a, a more stringent judge. Uh, but generally, people lean towards uh, more projects going forward than more pro- than projects you know, like staying staying back. So, uh, just kind of give you an idea. Uh, and every project I scored was from a different county besides JCPS. So it was good to see what other counties were doing out in the state. So I'm going to go ahead and present my screen and. Read. We'll get started with DPOJ. And so this is kind of a, uh, a rehash or a remix of a presentation that was done at the Coordinator Connection this year, um, back in, I think it was August, um, with Steven and Danielle and uh, Kathleen might've been participating in that as well. And so just kind of goes over some of the categories for DPOJ. And so uh, why DPOJ? It's because you know your students are already doing digital work in a lot of these categories and it's just a matter of uh digging those artifacts out and placing them into a, the right category and possibly winning a, a, a state championship right uh they can come from anyone's class so if you're a chemistry teacher if you teach in a high school and you've got a chemistry teacher who's having kids uh design a cell uh or, or something like that um, you can have that chemistry teacher, you know, that work can come from that chemistry class. Uh, you can have kids, if, you're, if your kids are studying U.S. history and they're talking about um, the Revolutionary War and they're making an infographic on the Revolutionary War in a history class, that can come from that class. It doesn't have to be a specific, like, I'm the SDLP coordinator, I'm going to assign this person an infographic, or I'm going to assign this person digital art or uh, uh, a future video or whatever. Um, it can come from anywhere. And it can also come from, if you're familiar with the PTA reflections contest uh, that usually happens every year at the beginning of the year, a lot of these same categories um, appear there. So like stuff, you've got kids that are, that are good with photography. Um, there are photo categories in this, like original photo or manipulated photo that they could probably enter in both the PTA reflections co- uh, competitions and SDLP DPOJ. So basically anything they do with technology, uh, is going to fit somewhere. So, hey, Rich, uh, Andrea had her hand up. Yeah. Okay. Go ahead, Andrea. Go ahead, Andrea. Are you there, Andrea? Sorry, I didn't mean to put it up. No, no, you're fine. Oh, okay. All right. Okay. So I'm going to go back to the presentation. <laughs> All right. Here we go. So. What so the, basically now what do you do? So you're gonna what what do you if you got kids that are interested in, in DPOJ and you're talking about DPOJ with your kids, you're gonna want to share the rubric with your students, um, uh, you know, so they can figure out okay what what goes into a digital art project or what goes into a um, um, a uh, graphic design project, um, or you can have kids do the stuff first and then go back and go hey uh, well how can we make this fit the category? Because honestly. Uh, pretty a lot of this stuff is just kind of cut and dry. They can't use um, uh, other people's work. So if you're u- using a digital art project, if you're doing a digital art project, for example, you can't say uh, I'm going to look for it, search for an image of a snowman and then place the snowman on the Google drawing and say here's my digital art because you didn't do it right. Uh, you just searched for clip art, so no clip art. It's got to be original work. Uh, in other words, um, now when you are sharing stuff like the rubric with your students, it's important to note that. Because your students are in a walled garden situation with uh, our Google domain, the only way for them to see a rubric is for you to go to the SDLP super sheet, uh, that spreadsheet with all the different categories, and you as a teacher have to open that rubric copy up, make a copy, 
and then send it to the students because it, that way it'll be coming from a JCPS account and it won't be coming from a KDE account, which our students are blocked from seeing. So you as the teacher would have to make a copy of the rubric and then send it to the students or share it with the students. If you've got a Google Classroom, it's, it's an easy way to do it uh, with your students. You could just share those rubrics uh, after you make a copy with your students to Google Classroom. But, um, but yeah, so that's just an important thing. We, we've all been dealing with this walled garden situation for a while now. Uh, and just know that your students cannot view those rubrics on their own. All right. Um, so let's talk about some categories. So the first category I want to talk about is digital art. And so again, a big thing is this contains no clip art from another source. So here are some examples from last year. This project in the top right corner here, this ball uh, flower, this flower is just an elementary project. And so it looks like the kid um, kind of drew a, a vase and then the flower. Now he may have, this, he or she may have uh, traced this and that's totally fine. They may uh, totally find the trace um, uh, to do a vector art uh, as it's called. Um, yeah, and so this was like second place last year in the state competition. This is elementary, okay? This, and this could be do it, this could be done in Google Drawings uh, or a number of programs, honestly, but yeah, it could definitely be done in Google Drawings. Um, this, pro this one down here in the bottom right corner is a uh, middle school entry, and I'm not quite sure what this student used, um, but you know, it looks pretty cool, doesn't it? Um, so this is a middle school entry, and it, I think it won first or second place. And then this was a first uh, place entry in the high school digital art competition. And so you see how, uh, kind of it can be it can range from very simple uh, in elementary school to um, you know pretty pretty complex and almost professional looking in um, high school right uh, so here's some tools you might think about using for digital art uh, Google drawings sketchpad uh, which there's a link on this and I'll share this resource with you guys here in uh, in a little while but there's a link here to sketchpad which if you're not on a Microsoft machine sketchpad is kind of like Microsoft paint it's a souped up version of Microsoft paint um, and um, Microsoft paint is another another tool you can use you see a lot of paint projects well and besides that uh, you've got um, uh, Piskel p-i-s-k-e-l uh, if you're familiar with Piskel, it creates those um, GIFs. And so the creating those GIFs is also a form of digital art, right? Uh, P-I-S-K-E-L. Uh, and you may have seen those GIFs going around. Um, uh, I know Beth Collodiad Height uh, uses it every year. So that could be another form of uh, digital art. So another category, graphic design. Graphic design is just symbols, images, and words combined. And so you, here you see a high school entry where it's just a logo. So think when you think about graphic design, logos are a huge part of graphic design. Okay, uh, anytime you see a logo, whether it's uh, a perfect like a, for a sports team or for JCPS or for anything, it's been done by a graphic designer. And so here is just a graphic design of a uh, a fake company. I guess a marriage. Um, uh, I don't know, I guess they're selling rings, a bridally yours. Okay. And this one first place, whoops, first place in the, at the high school division for graphic design last year. So pretty neat. And it's actually really simple, right? They just took, uh, some circles. They did take some, um, some clip art there, which you can use clip art if you attribute clip art, uh, in graphic design. Um, but digital art is totally original, right? So that's another, another distinction there. Digital art, totally original. Graph design, you are allowed to use clip, clip, clip art as long as you attribute it to where you got it from. Okay. So really simple logo. It's got some font there, some text, and that's the high school version. Uh, up top in the top right corner is a middle school entry. Uh, it's just a poster. It says together we are everything. And it's just an image. There are two hold it, uh, two hands being held. Uh, they probably used a, uh, like a line tool or a, uh, uh, some sort of brush to, uh, to draw those hands or a pencil to draw those hands. Uh, and then they've got a background there. So, uh, pretty simple. Um, and then here down at the bottom is the first place winner from last year in the graphic design category for elementary from bloom elementary. And this is just vector art done by a student at bloom elementary. So they took an image of Harriet Tubman and they just traced her features, her face, her hair, uh, her clothing. Uh, using the polyline tool, which I talked about last week with the um, uh, snowman. 
they just traced her features and then they added some text here and that's it. It's, you know, that, that was the first place winner. And we talked about it last week as far as like, because there's text on this, it makes it graph design, right? If they left the text off, it probably would stay, it would have been in the digital art category. Okay. Text makes a big deal when you talk about graphic design. All right. And if you have a question, stop me uh, as I'm going through this. All right. So next category, infographics. Infographics um, are stuff like you see in magazines or on TV shows. Um, uh, lots of times in documentaries, they'll use infographics. And so here you see an example from Mazik Middle School last year. They talk about the different types of learning. And so they talk about visual learning versus oral learning versus verbal learning. And they've got images and text and sometimes they have probably have statistics like X number of people are uh, learn this way uh, versus that way and so on and so on. Here's another example from last year. Uh, this kid's talking about mindfulness and they're just talking about all the different types of mindfulness. And, you know, the average person has 50 to 70,000 thoughts per day, you know. All this stuff, you, you're like, oh, I, even if you're like, if you, I used to ask you, well, have you ever seen an infographic before? And maybe like, you know, 30% of them would raise their hands. You've seen these before. Um, you just may have not known they're called infographics, but they have stuff like charts, graphs, stats, uh, maps a lot of times, uh, very colorful uh, in most cases. So what can you use to do these? Google Drawings is a perfect thing to create an infographic in. E-publishing. Um, there are a lot of, um, tools on here that were on the August version that aren't approved by JCBS. So I took those off. Uh, so when I, when you think about e-publishing, think about if your kids are creating a website, um, for anything. And again, you would have to create the website initially. It could just be like whatever the kid, if the kid says they want to create a website on endangered species or whatever, uh, you would create that website and then make them editors on it. Um, and then you don't have to touch it anymore after that. But the only reason you're doing that is because again, everything the kids create from their JCS Google account is blocked to outsiders. Okay. But, uh, any kind of Google site, um, that the kids create, uh, or, or work on is a, is, is a form of e-publishing. And so, um, definitely a, uh, um, uh, a category you might think about. This was a, this, this is an example of that. That's, this is the manual red eye. So uh, the student newspapers, if you've got a student newspaper at your school, um, that's, that's online, that's e-publishing, right? Uh, I believe the manual red eye won some award. It was last year or the year before. So um, e-publishing, um, student newspapers are a great example of that. And as you're noticing here on number two, it says students create a description of the steps and tools used to create in product. All that is, is it's a reflection. So accompanying every entry into DPOJ, kids have to say what tools they use to create it, uh, what their steps were to create it, and, um, you know, uh, maybe why they created it. Uh, but maybe it's only a lot of times it's just a paragraph. Okay. Digital storytelling. So this is, this can be done in a lot of different ways. Um, it can be done, uh, you know, through text, it can be done through Google slides. It can be done through uh, video. It can be done through, um, uh, any number of things. Uh, let's see if I play this we'll play here. Hey, how are you? I'm okay. It's nothing really. I'm okay. I'm not okay. So you kind of see how that kid just had really, it's just slides, uh, going one right after the other and he's narrating the slides and then he's going to have some drawings that come in. Uh, so it's using stuff like iMovie, uh, to create that. Uh, but, but also you could, if you were just doing Google slides and you had different drawings, you could do that as well. Uh, uh, what is this called? Steve This is clips clips. Yeah. Clips. Uh, any of the Google tools could be, uh, used for this as well. PSA, um, public service announcement. And so this is pretty self-explanatory. Um, you we're all familiar with what PSAs are, you know, so this is just, uh, you know, your no smoking or don't litter or, uh, wear a mask. It goes over your nose, uh, <laughs> type, uh, uh, public service announcement. Let's just take a look at this one. Uh, 
Oh, this is all the finalists. Okay, so that makes sense. This is every finalist for digital video products. We're not going to watch it then. This is great, though, if you want to watch this because it goes over every digital video product, and there are many in JCPS or in the in SDLP. Um, but, yeah, so the t note the time limit on this, 15, 30, 60 seconds. Uh, that's important. So you can't create, like, a four-minute PSA. Um, that's why I looked at this originally. I was like six minutes. I was like, there's no way. Uh, but yeah, the, the timeline is very stringent, uh, stringent on this PSA thing. So yeah, any kind of public service announcement, um, created with iMovie or, uh, even your camera on your Chromebooks, you can use your camera on your Chromebooks. Your Chromebooks have a camera. All the kids have to do is they just go down to the, uh, the tray on their Chromebook and type in camera and record a video. Uh, so that's a, just another easy way to do that. Um, PSAs are good. Feature video is another video category. So this is for your kids. If they, you know, they like to make, um, uh, if they like to make TikTok type videos, or if they like to make, uh, uh, you know, short videos, or if, they, if a lot of kids have their own YouTube channels, um, you know, this is kind of that category for those kids, the kids that like to, they're really creative with videos. Um, I used to do a, a good computer kids, um, podcast where we would talk about different stuff like, uh, um, how to crop uh, an image, or we would talk about fonts, or we talk about um, uh, coding. And so any of those videos that are like two minutes long, um, they would go in this feature video category. Okay. So if your kids like to make videos, feature video category is um, right for you. Now this says iPad mount on it, because if we were in person, um, and your kids were creating a video, they, this is just the idea of keeping the camera stable and not shaking it. Uh, which is always good practice, but yeah, iMovie clips are, are really good for that. Uh, and again, you know, if we're, we use the tools we have, right? Chromebooks, uh, you have a camera. All right. Next category, screen capture. So screen capture category, we are really kind of hindered in this category this year. I left it in, um, but just, just cause I want to talk about it. Uh, screencastify because it's not approved for students, uh, we cannot use it for this category. Uh, but if you, if they've got QuickTime um, on their computers, they can, they can use QuickTime uh, and kind of screen capture that video. Um, and all that well, is, is that, it, yeah. Did you get a chance to see that uh, Katie Wolf video that Rebecca Reynolds shared about uh, screen recording for students? It was I in the chat. That. I didn't get to check it out, but it looks like uh, Katie Wolf has a good way to do uh, screen recording on, on the Chromebooks. Uh, maybe that's something we might want to share out uh, after you check it out. Yeah, I will take a look at that. Actually, I was starting to watch it. and I thought she was talking strictly about uh, using the camera to record, you know, basically outward video of like, it might be. I didn't get to watch um, it all either. But I'll yeah, I'll, I'll take a look at that. And if I find a way in a Chromebook to do screen capture, or if anybody knows how to do a screen capture on a Chromebook, um, uh, please do share. Um, but yeah, so right now you're kind of limited in this category screen capture. Um, but yeah, so just kind of, and, and if we ever do get screencastify approved for student use, then this definitely is something you can use. Uh, but right now very limited. So those are some different categories. One thing that you could do in place of uh, screen capture though, is a category called technical writing. And so that's just basically kids going step by step of like how to do something. And so they would get, get on a Google doc. And so last year there was a uh, first place or second place winner in technical writing for JCPS that did how to upload things to the JCPS backpack. So it'd be like step one, open Google, uh, uh, or open the Google Chrome browser. Uh, step two, go to Google. Step three, click on the waffle and the, you know, that kind of stuff. Um, that's technical writing where you just kind of, if you have kids that are really good at sequencing, that's their, that's a category for them. Right. So uh, not necessarily the most riveting stuff, but, um, it's really important to be able to write stuff like that. So technical writing is a great category for, um, your kids that like to do sequencing. Okay. Um, those are just some of the categories. Uh, you can see more categories. If you go to the STLP super sheet, um, and you've got all of the ones here in the green and he has started to, um, uh, X out some categories for this year because we're virtual and it looks like he's added some new categories here, augmented reality, uh, which is something, uh, I need to look into. That's cool. Uh, Kentucky travel, uh, media literacy, uh, and a, a photo essay, that could be really neat. So lots of different new categories is he, that he's added here really, really recently. So uh, stuff to check out on the STLP super sheet. Any questions about DPOJ? Mm. 
Okay. So uh, beyond that, and again, those are going to be due in late February. Uh, you can do two in every category. So like if you could, you could have two digital art projects, two graphic design, two infographics, you could do all, up to two, pro two projects in every category if you want. Now, most people don't do that. They do like one, they pick like one category or two categories or three categories and they enter, pro enter projects in those. Uh, but if you wanted to enter every category, go for it. Um, so that's just something, uh, that's your prerogative on that. Um, but definitely, uh, we like to see DPOJ entries because we like to showcase what our students are doing in JCPS. Uh, any questions about regionals and the projects that you submitted? Um, I have a, I'm sorry to go back. It took me a second to move my mouse. Um, mm -hmm. I had a question about, uh, DPOJ. There are two kids at my school that aren't in STLP, but they do a mm -hmm. lot of work with like video editing and stuff like that. Can, can they enter as students at Cochrane? Yes. Yeah. Yes. They, any the DPOJ can come from any kid in your school. Um, it doesn't have to come from, um, uh, kids that are particularly in your STLP. So if you've got a kindergartner that's really good, like they can, yeah. they can enter something. Uh